Multigreen, building attainable, sustainable, and tech-enabled multifamily real estate through impact investing. Welcome to the Multigreen Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Norton, and today we'll be speaking with Rachel Rosenthal, the Director of Investor Relations with 13 years of experience in the field. As a board member of San Francisco's Women in Real Estate, she comes well-equipped with unique expertise and perspective on how to raise equity capital in the real estate space. She has made a huge impact in Multigreen, and now she helps measure the impact of our projects. Enjoy our conversation. Thank you so much for being with us today, Rachel. So we've been doing this all season long. This is season zero, and it is our attempt to re-document what happened this year, 2020, as we launched from Davos, Switzerland at the World Economic Forum, and as we've now completed four transactions in our first year of operations. And now we know a little bit more about who we are and what our identity is here at Multigreen. But before we get into Multigreen, who is Rachel Rosenthal and why the heck are you working here at Multigreen and what brought you to this industry? So Rachel, why don't you give a second and just give some background on your work here in this industry? Sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having me just on this podcast and also in the last year at Multigreen, which has just been really exciting and amazing to be a part of. So it's really fun to document it here with you today. So I have been in the institutional fundraising space for most of my career. My family invested in real estate in the industrial space, and I've always loved the built environment. So I was drawn to real estate out of all other asset classes. Though I've worked in each over the past six years, I've been primarily focused on real estate solely. What interested me about Multigrain is I do have an entrepreneurial spirit, so I loved that this is a new platform, but also that our core value is creating impact and providing a solution to the lack of housing and lack of attainable housing which is really important to me personally. And it's just a huge issue that we continue to hear about. And, and we don't see a lot on the solution side. So I was drawn to Multigreen for that reason that we are actually adding units to the housing stock. We're providing a nice place to live to folks that are middle income, you know, entry level workers or firefighters, nurses, our essential workers. We're providing a home for them. And hopefully in the process, we're enriching communities. And so that is incredibly important to me. I saw Multigreen as a, a new player in the space, but have been in multifamily and real estate for a long time. And I was just really excited for the opportunity and to, to join the team and be a part of this. Well, we are lucky to have you. One thing I just learned about you is that your family invested in the industrial asset class space. I think you have a bigger real estate understanding than I even ever realized. (laughs) That's correct. My one part of the family is in farming and agriculture and the other part uh, in industrial real estate. So it's definitely in the blood. Now tell me more about your farm. If I understand correctly, you're into some organic stuff. We do, yes. So uh, my family has about 200 acres of organic farmland in California. And on it, they farm raw milk dairy. It has a huge cult following. We grew up actually going to this farm in Saratoga, California, in the middle of Silicon Valley to get our milk. And my mom just left it and ended up buying the farm later when when the farmer passed away and didn't have any family to, to hand it down to, which, you know, we often see that in real estate as well. So they've had that business now for over 20 years. That's tremendous. So you live in the Bay Area and San Francisco is near and dear to your heart, obviously, and Silicon Valley. As a female leader in this space, how did you navigate your career? I know that you are on several councils here in the industry that represent female executives. Can you maybe tell our listeners a little bit about that? Sure. 
I mean, there's really no secret to it. I, I started out in this space, in the space of raising capital across asset classes. I joined a great group of people who mentored me kind of into it, started out at the bottom and just worked really, really hard and kept my eyes and ears open at all times. I'm, I'm an observer. And so I, I learned rather quickly just taking it all in. And, and again, I was taught by some really smart people how to raise capital and how to run the process of raising capital. And being a woman in this industry, <laughs> you know, uh, I have such a great network of women in this industry who I love so much. And as women, naturally, we can be competitive. I think men obviously are as well. So as human beings, we're competitive in nature. But, you know, you see sometimes people putting others down, and I think it's so important to lift each other up that it can only help you grow and achieve more. But I enjoy helping others. So I've joined these groups of women where hopefully I can be a resource to them. And there are days where they're a wonderful resource to me. And so I just constantly try to do good. And uh, typically it comes back to me. And if not, it just feels good to to do good. That's a great value system. I hope that next year we can get you more involved with these organizations and and representing multi-green and hopefully COVID-19 is over with and we can start traveling again. That would be great. I think we're all dreaming for that day. I know we have a conference coming up in San Francisco in January with Jeff Dorman at IREI for market navigation, the training that he does. And he talks about the importance of messaging and process, specifically in the institutional real estate space. What is it about messaging and process that is important to you? Well, I mean, they're two different things. So messaging is taking your strategy and articulating it in a way that's attractive. And what your ultimate goal is, is to listen to investors and help provide a solution to their portfolio as they think about portfolio allocation. And so how is attainable housing, for an example, a great investment for each investor? It's important for your messaging to articulate your strategy well. It's important uh, for your messaging to be consistent and have one voice that's aligned with the goals of the company and your strategy overall and your brand. So it's important to have established that. And then from there, everything flows. And process is so important, as we know, across every team. It's important in capital raising that every team has a process and you're adhering to that process because at the end of the day, everything flows up to doing great deals and raising capital for those deals and then delivering on your promise to your investors. And if your processes aren't in place, you know, you take longer to get back to investors. You don't know everything about your deal that you should you don't know exactly when something's going wrong with the deal where you need to know and you need to be able to communicate that to your team to fix the issue and or communicate to your investors. Talking about the process of fundraising specifically is something I know very well and and running that process. Again, listening to investors, what people are looking for, what their appetite is and delivering that solution to them. So making sure you're reaching out to people that you think could genuinely have interest and listening to them when it sounds like maybe they don't and moving them through the process. It's important to stay in front of people and get them what they need. Again, delivering what you said you're going to and just staying in front of people and most importantly, building a relationship and a meaningful relationship through the process. One of my mentors always said it's about the process and not the proceeds. And I think that is what we believe in here at Multigreen as well. Absolutely. I've watched you develop a process for investor relations and marketing And I don't think people realize how much time and effort it takes. I remember one of the very first times you and I were working together and closing our very first large deal. I think we spent all day Saturday and all day Sunday drafting one email. That's right. And I didn't know that kind of time commitment was necessary to advance investors along. So that's been really fun to watch um, you take lead on. 
Also, some of the initiatives that you've been taking lead on has been how we're going to report on impact to the investors. That's one thing that we're priding ourselves on here at Multigreen. That's why we partnered with IX and to perpetuate that message of, of making the world a better place. Maybe you can speak and tell the listeners a little bit about what we did here with the impact scorecard and how we're measuring impact generally. Sure. I'll just say, you know, it, again, something that really drew me to multi-green is the impact side and our plans to measure that impact, which is the most important part of impact, both in holding yourselves accountable and also in reporting to investors. So what we did is we took a holistic look at the world of frameworks, which as you know, Randy, you <laughs> drove this is is that um, there are many frameworks and many different ideas around impact as groups are looking to define their impact and ESG policies and frameworks. We wanted to make our own framework. We knew that the world of frameworks has put in a lot of work to create these frameworks and different variables that you can measure on. And so we looked at every single one, distilled it down to four or five of the most important to us. You do find in the process that there's quite a bit of redundancy and also your strategy is unique. And so it's important to take those variables, look at the whole picture, and then we've distilled it down into the variables that are going to work for us in our buildings, but also push us to be better over time and we will be scored on each of those variables. This final scoring on each new uh, deal will be brought to our impact committee where it will be reviewed alongside our investment committee's review of the project underwriting. So it's very much an important part of the process for us. It's a box that must be ticked positively by our impact committee in order to move the deal forward. You know, and we say, Randy, that we first and foremost have a fiduciary responsibility to our investors. So most important is that IRR in that return, but also for us, we are using the impact rate of return, which is a little IRR, which is brought to us by our dear friend, Howard Buffett, who's such a part of multi-green and our beginning and continues to work with us. So we are blessed to have that as a variable and a measuring mechanism to show us how we are performing from an impact standpoint. And then from there, uh, we will take these variables, we'll measure ourselves deal by deal and, and scale it deal by deal. And hopefully the goal is to get better over time. When we first started discussing multi-green, it was this time last year, we were getting ready to launch from Davos. At the time, we thought that if we just did one deal in 2020, it would be a success. We ended up doing four. How did that happen? We have big dreams and it's amazing. You know, we have a great team, Randy you have attracted incredibly smart people. I have loved working with you. Obviously you've been in this industry for a long time. And I think that we have a very strong group. We know what we're looking to do and you do a great job leading us in that direction. And we're able to achieve more than, than we thought, which isn't always the case and especially in a COVID environment. So it really is, <laughs> Maybe a stroke of luck and some good karma, if anyone believes in that. But it's also just, you know, good old fashioned hard work uh, and a great dedicated team. Well, we're going to get to our last questions here shortly, but we have our first annual shareholder meeting coming up in May. Um, that's, you know, five or six months away. And hopefully COVID allows us to travel, but if not, we'll do it virtually. What message are you going to be proud about most? And what are you going to try and convey to the shareholders and the investors of Multigreen come May? To the shareholders, I'd like to be able to convey to them that we are achieving and have achieved what we've promised. That's the goal at the end of the day. So between here and then, it's all hands on deck, allowing us to be able to say that uh, when the time comes. Well, thank you very much for all your hard work there, Rachel. 
I know that in a future podcast, I want to highlight the investor portal and all that you've been doing, uh, working on that. But can you just take um, 60 seconds now and remind the listeners of the advanced portal that you've been taking lead on with, Danny? So like I said, I've been in this industry for a long time, you know, from entering data into the CRM, implementing different CRMs, testing different CRMs, and, you know, there are positives and negatives of of each. One thing that I am extremely grateful for are the tools that I've had at Multigreen to be able to do my job, unlike any other role that I've ever had. And that in part is due to the technology back Bone that comes to us from your family office and your expertise in data centers. Through that, we were able to essentially design our dream portal. And I was so happy to be a part of that and continue to be happy to be a part of that and to actually be able to use it on a daily basis now. And then to deliver it to our investors and have that be the environment that they get to live in. I just have such confidence in it. And it's been really neat to be a part of that with the team. Oh, thanks for that feedback. Rachel, at the end of every one of our episodes, we ask two questions. And the first question is, in the spirit of multi-green, what are some of your favorite green things? I'm laughing as you ask me that because green is actually my favorite color. (laughs) And as I look around, I have all these green things. I have a green vase. I have the green box. That's my food delivery company. I have my green phone cover, et cetera. But as you ask me that, and just going back to a little bit of the family farm, I suppose, Before the family farm, there wasn't a family farm, and my family lived in the middle of Silicon Valley. It was kind of between urban and uh, suburbia, and my mom always wanted a farm, and she talked the -the across-the-street neighbors into contributing part of their land on their property so that she could plant a cornfield. And so here we were in the middle of suburbia in Silicon Valley with a cornfield and pumpkin patch across the street from our house. And then around our house was a vegetable garden with every plant and, you know, fresh food you could think of, large sunflowers, you name it. And I think about this because it's a little funny, you know, I love eating well and and wellness. And I think it helps you to perform at work and in your life and helps with mental health and all these things. And I think it's so important. And it was a luxury to us, which I didn't realize, obviously, as a kid, it was just fun. You know, we learned to work in the farm, to plant plants, to watch them grow and kind of have that reward. We ate the food that was obviously so good for us. And I think about this with multi-green as we're thinking about, you know, our impact and how we can have impact, not just at the property level, not just at our organizational level, but more importantly, at the community level, it's that social, the S and ESG that it's difficult, I think, for groups to define, you know, what are we going to do at that level? And I think we have more exploration to do in that space, but you know, my my hope would be to find a way to connect with the community to allow our residents access to fresh local foods and things that they may not uh, normally have access to, something that's special about our community as opposed to some other communities that are just kind of urban and there's nothing else that is offered to them in terms of quality of life. That's a fantastic response. There's so many things that trigger in name association when trying to locate green in some way. And I think you've explained several. So thank you. The last question is a fun one. It is the end of 2020. And we have shared an audacious goal with the world on the global stage at the World Economic Forum that we were going to improve the state of the world by constructing 40,000 attainable, sustainable, and tech-enabled multifamily units. If you just had one wish, Rachel, for multi-green, what would it be? It's an audacious goal. And, you know, I've no doubt that we can achieve that. I think that, you know, even if we infused the housing stock with 10,000 new units, we have had impact. 
uh, positively so. My hope is that we can not only do that from a reaching our numbers goal perspective, because we want to have a meaningful level of impact um, in providing this solution. But I hope that we can be an example to others in the way that we're holding ourselves accountable, that we're actually having impact and by what variables. And like I said, how are we having actual impact in the community? So that if somebody were to come to our communities, they'd be able to say, I see a difference here. That's my ongoing hope for us. Rachel, we will figure that out and we will do it together. I think we have the right team assembled. Thanks for having me. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you for listening. Join us as we build 40,000 attainable, sustainable, and tech-enabled multifamily homes by 2030. And if you like the content you're hearing, hit the subscribe button. Follow us at Think Multigreen and sign up to learn more at www.multi.green.